Amen. Thank God you are here. Amen. I believe God has a word in this place tonight. Amen. You know, this being the fifth installment of the truth behind hip hop, just to give you a little background information, it's just a little a vision some 18 years ago that God gave me about some things that would begin to happen. And um, we shot the first video, I believe in 2000. I had been preaching the message about two years prior to that. Been studying it for about 12 years prior to that. So it was just something that I felt like God laid on my heart to do. And um, a vision that he gave me, and we're gonna kinda go back and rehash some of that vision so that you can understand how it's brought us here to where we are now. Now, anybody that's been following online news reports or different things and you are familiar with the first video, second video, and third video, you know that there has been a prophetic call on EX Ministries because pretty much everything we said would happen has happened. Amen. And I, I believe totally that the true sign of a prophet is it happens. It's that simple. If it don't happen, false prophet. Amen? So we're real careful with what we say. I don't want to say nothing. I have to go back. Thank God I've never had to apologize. And though the world try to make me look like a slap crazy liar. You know, I was Googling somebody, not Googling, but somebody emailed me Urban Dictionary's definition of G. Craig Lewis. I don't know if y'all ever seen that, but Urban Dictionary says I'm the one that started the uh, onslaught against Jay-Z and I chopped his words up and put, put a backwards message in his song and claimed that it was from him. Anybody ever read that? I thought that was funny. It said that I made the backwards message that said murder, murder, Jesus. I'm like, I'm on Jesus' side. But I just thank God, the attention that it, the message, God just, just decided everything he's told me he was going to do, he's done. And that's what has brought us to this point. But I believe there is a deeper depth to this thing. I believe there are some things that are going to be shared here tonight that are pivotal in where we are going, where we are headed as a people, the change of the climate that is coming forth. And I just want God's people to wake up. That's all I want, please. Amen. Amen. Once the, once the church becomes unshakable, we become unshakable. Then we are in position to really do something for God. But as long as we're blowing with the wind, following behind men that are godless and calling them believers, you know, we're not even in the place to Stand for what is right because we're following people that are just godless. We got to change. Look at somebody and say, we got to change that. We have to. If we have God in us, why are we? Look at somebody and say, why are you following somebody godless? You know, and I, I, I just think that we have to make a stand. So we're going to just jump right into this. I want to jump right in it because I have a lot of information to cover but I really, really believe your eyes are going to be open some more and you're going to be blessed. And I want to encourage you to continue on Sundays to listen to the broadcast. We reveal a lot of things there as well or go online if you're out of town and you're not um, from this area. But I think it's time. Let's jump into this because this one right here is a doozy. God had to just keep picking me up off the floor just... I'm going to try my best not to break down. I, I, I preached this message in Chicago last Friday and just broke down in the middle. I mean, it is, it's, it's hard to do this one because it has some sirens that's going to go off in this message for the body of Christ. And if you understand the call of a prophet, you really understand that I'm just not here to make you feel good. I can't do that. I would love to. It would increase my money if I did that, really, honestly. You can take folks' money when you make them feel good. But there's some parts of this that you just ain't going to feel that good on. So 
Hopefully the funny parts will make up for those. <laughs> but I got to tell you the truth. How many of you love the truth? The Bible said you will know. That means you can't run and hide. The people that didn't come tonight because they didn't want to hear it, they, they're still going to hear it. Because the Bible said you will know the truth and the truth is going to do what? It is going to make you free. Not a free get free conference, but the truth. Amen? Oh, ain't nothing changed since number one. It's all the same. It's just the same. It's the truth. Look at somebody say it's the truth anyhow. Amen. Genesis 3 and 15, and I'm, we're going to do a Bible walkthrough kind of thing. So those of us that know the word of God, we understand that in the beginning, God cre when God created man, God created a wonderful thing. He created male and female as court, according to the scripture made he him. Male and female were visited by an enlightened being we know as a serpent. And this particular enlightened serpent uh, brought forth the idea of eating off God's forbidden tree tree of y'all know what that tree what kind of tree was it tree of knowledge knowledge of good and evil you know the Bible it's, it's, it's a lot deeper than we think if you really begin to study different things you know it's not the little sunshine band lesson of an apple and a snake it's a lot deeper than that. We're talking about an enlightened being that had parts in him that weren't all animal, but we're talking about something different here. And this being, we know it's part devil, really, influencing them to get knowledge. What he was really getting them to do was open their eyes because he said when you eat it, your eyes will open. In other words, the eyes you're seeing with now aren't the true depths of it. But there are other, there's a, really I'm just going to put it in our terms, there's another eye that can be opened, the third eye. The eye that makes you God. Makes you like a God. Makes you as God. So we know what happened. God got mad, chased him out of the garden. I mean, God said this to that being. He said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He said, and between thy seed, which was that being seed, which is Satan, and her seed. So he's going to put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman, speaking to the serpent. He said, and it shall bruise thy head, and you're going to be so low, that his heel is going to, your head is going to bruise his heel. Y'all know who he's talking about, right? Look at somebody say Jesus. So immediately, Satan goes and he's scurrying to stop this plan. Got to stop this plan. So what does he do? He wants to corrupt mankind. That takes us to Genesis 6 and 4. This is the devil's plan to corrupt mankind. Scripture tells us there were giants in the earth in those days and also after those days when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were men of old or as witchcraft Satanists call it, the old ones or men of renown. So we're talking about some great men being born because the sons of God came unto the daughters of men. 6 and 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every, look at somebody and say every. Boy, that's everything. Look, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil. That's some evil. It just nonstop evil. That's all they thought about, just sitting down thinking about doing something terrible. And it repented the Lord that he made man on this earth and it grieved him in his heart. Let's dig into this a little bit so y'all can know the picture I'm trying to paint when it's talking about 
the giants that were in the earth. And if you do some research, you'll find out that there were beings on earth some 30 feet tall. They found bones and skeletons and different things, but of course they don't announce it publicly because it totally, totally, totally destroys evolution theory. A 30-foot man, come on. Ain't no 30-foot eight. King Kong ain't real. So you can't explain a 30-foot man. You know, I was the one in Sunday school always wanting the explanation. So they talking about David and Goliath. I'm trying to stay on Goliath. They trying to move forward to the five smooth stones. And I'm trying to bring the Sunday school teacher away. But wait a minute now. Wait. A giant? Yes, sir. He was a giant. Now, David took the... No, no, no. no, no back it up. A, a, 30 feet tall? Yeah, he was 30 feet tall. Now, and we just... Well, how can you just skip over that and say that willy-nilly? You better back up and tell me about this giant. And I found out Moses was fighting giants, Amalekites, and hybrid beings. And because when the angels of God came down, the angels were fallen angels. Look at somebody say fallen angels. And these fallen angels saw that the women were fair and begin to sleep with human beings. I know somebody saying, that's impossible. And their favorite movie is I Am Legend. <laughs> oh, that can't happen, got all the Clone Wars episodes. Ain't that funny? Let me explain what's going on here. The sons of God in that passage is this word, benai, hi, Elohim. These are angels of God, sons of God. This passage, sons of this phrase, sons of God, was also in Job 2, when the Bible said that the sons of God presented themselves before God, and Satan was there with them to present himself. Same word, benai, hi, Elohim. Jude 6 says, and the angels that left their first estate that they were locked away in chains until judgment, same benign high Elohim. Fallen angels that fell from heaven. Are y'all with me? I know somebody say, what in the world is he going to do? You're going to like this, I promise. The Bible tells us that they came down to the daughters of men, translates as daughters of Adam, human Beings, human beings and angels together make something real crazy. You got men that are part angel, women that are part angel, hybrid, what we would call something like aliens. Because you don't know what it is, right? It's part this and part that. The Bible said that when these parts came together, they created a race of beings that were so evil that all they did was think about evil continually. They created giants or Nephilim. Nephilim are the product of the sons of God and the daughters of men. Are y'all still with me? It's getting very interesting, isn't it? Oh, just wait. So we got these Nephilim on earth. Now, if you saw a 30-foot man walking down the street, he walk up to you, in all of our eyes, he's automatically God. I mean, it's like, yes, Lord, what would you have for me to do? You know what I'm saying? 30 feet, how tall is this ceiling, Pastor? 20, 25, 30? Yeah. God, well, how do you think that the people felt when these beings were down and they were mixing with humans, showing themselves great and mighty and powerful? Then what we don't think about they had knowledge that wasn't of this dimension because they came from another dimension. So that means they were smart or 
compared to us, enlightened. Are y'all still with me? This was a weird situation because you had people, I mean, you just had all this stuff going on in this particular time. God is seeing it. It's creating evil, wickedness, wickedness, and even more wickedness. Then we come to Genesis 6 and 9 where God, the Bible tells us these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. They're not saying here that Noah did everything right. Noah was perfect because he had the only blood line that wasn't corrupted by the fallen angels or the Nephilim. Are y'all with me now? Y'all seeing what's happening here? So God is saying, I'm going to destroy mankind, but I'm going to find me a pure genetic bloodline to start this thing over again. So Noah walked with God into the ark, brought in the animals and the creatures that God told him to bring in, and then what happened? The flood. Look at somebody and say flood. The Bible said that the fountains opened up and water came from under these beings because they were 30 feet tall. How long would it take rain to drown them? You know Noah of them had like, what was 40 days worth of food. So, like, Lord, so the water had to come from under them to drown these big 30 foot and taller or whatever hybrid beings, whatever they were doing, whatever they were able to do. You know, I don't even want to think about it because it gets a little scary, don't it? But these, all these beings began to, God began to drown and destroy them because he wanted to start mankind over again now this lets us know once the flood starts angels were locked away till judgment according to the passage in jude it tells us that the angels that left their first estate that came down god locked them away and reserved them unto judgment then it, of course the daughters of adam that drowned we know they go to hell but there is a question that we must ask ourselves where did the nephilim spirits go what are the Nephilim spirits? Well, you had this hybrid, this angel mixed with this human creating a hybrid entity. When you kill that body, where does that spirit go? It's of both worlds. Where does it go? Half angel, half human. Isaiah 26 tells us that they can't be resurrected. So we know that these beings during the flood, the beings drowned, but the spirits, where did they go? I'll tell you where they went. And this is the most, one of the most important points I'm going to make for you tonight. According to the scripture, when the ark rested and waters subsided, Noah came out and they began to multiply. The Bible tells us that corruption started again. Y'all still with me? And it leads us to these two people right here, probably the most important figures in sorcery and witchcraft, false god worship. Nimrod, Osiris, Apollo, I mean Jupiter, all the major false gods are represented by this one god. They're all parallels. Now, I have to let you, let you know what I'm talking about because it's very important because we're living in a time where knowledge has increased. Because of that, you're going to have a lot of people challenge your God of the Bible, your virgin birth of Jesus by a parallel situation. Remember, Satan is out to... So he wants to destroy... God's work 
So what he's going to do is he's going to mimic what God is doing. He knew that the seed of the woman would produce Jesus. Jesus, so he created his own version. This is Samirimus. And this is the birth of her son, Ninus, who is actually the reincarnation of Nimrod because she's Nimrod's wife and mother. Okay, this is going to make sense in just a minute. Nimrod supposedly had died and they cut him up in 14 pieces and they only found 13 pieces. Y'all know about that. And he was missing his, his uh, penis. And so she made a golden one. That's where we get the phallus. That's where we get all the tall monuments and different things. They all come from this false god idea of Nimrod and Samaribus. Well, it's very important for you to understand that all the Egyptian religions, all of the mythology, all of the astrology, everything points to Nimrod being the incarnation of a god. What did Nimrod do? Nimrod built the Tower of Babel or had it built under his rule. Are y'all with me? Why were they building the Tower of Babel? Because they believed that Nimrod belonged in heaven. So they were building a tower to get Nimrod up a porthole into heaven. How were they doing that? Because they were using the knowledge of enlightened beings and the spirits of the drowned Nephilim. See, the spirits stayed here, and they are what we know today as demons. Have you ever been casting out a demon? Sometimes demons will address themselves as the old ones. These are beings from back that used to have supreme bodies and ruled as rulers because of their height because of the information, because of their knowledge. They were rulers on earth in their eyes. God washed them all away, but their spirits had nowhere to go. Are y'all still with me? They're what we know today as demons, and these demons are constantly trying to recreate a situation where they can get worship and be a superior being again. Are y'all still with me? Oh, it's going to make sense in a minute. So all the old ancient cultures point to Nimrod and Semiramis because of their building of the Tower of Babel, not just the Tower of Babel, but what else did they do? They created the most wicked culture ever in the world's history, and that was the wicked city of what? Babylon. 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 Sodom was born out. All of wickedness was born out of Babylon. What was going on in Babylon? Sorcery. Witchcraft. They had the blueprint to the heavens. They believed they could build this tower. All this wickedness. Where was it coming from? It was coming from the knowledge of the fallen angels. Y'all still with me? The devil is using this, trying to work this out. So God finally... Oh, let me explain the third eye. It's very important. See, the third eye, this is the eye of Horus in Egyptian mythology. And I got to rush through this real quick. But in Egyptian mythology, they believe that when the Adam and Eve were tempted to eat off the tree, it would open up their eye. It would give them knowledge of a supreme being. So that's why they were enticed to open their third eye by eating off the tree of knowledge. That is where the third eye came from, if you ever wanted to know. So when you see people wearing the eye, when you see them celebrating the eye in the Egyptian culture, you understand that is the eye of knowledge or the eye that makes you a god. Are y'all with me? So this is what the devil was tempting Adam and Eve with. Open your eye. The third eye. Now this is an actual statue of Osiris. He's wearing a fish hat. That looks familiar. That's the one the Pope wears. He's wearing this demonic fish hat. And he's Osiris, but he, he translates in all other ancient cultures as a supreme god. Are y'all still with me? Everybody had their own version. The Sumerians had Gilgamesh, you know, and then the, the, the Greek, they had uh, Zeus. And, you know, then some had great Odin. And they had all these, all these stories of these fables, but they were all pointing to this one great ruler who was Nimrod in the Bible. So we're going to use the Bible version. Is that all right? You'll find it in all the different cultures. You got 
this baby being born, supposedly being born of a virgin and giving birth to Nimrod as he comes back to take his rightful place and rule. People are still waiting on that. So when they see that, they try to parallel that with Jesus and say, wait a minute, two, two three thousand years before Christ was ever born, they already had a birth of Christ. Well, what that is, is that's Satan running parallel, trying to introduce it to make it look like it has already happened. So it would hurt your faith. Are y'all understanding me? The atheists have already begun to make movies. They've already got information all over the internet. And I'm saying this so you better be real smart. When you read, they try to parallel astrology and say, well, Jesus, the story of Jesus had already happened. Well, that is Satan being deceptive. This is an important message. Please pay attention, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Look at somebody and say he's going somewhere. Wickedness increased. Nimrod and Samarimus, wickedness just increased, got more and more wicked. Just times got wicked. They began to worship him as God. He began to set himself up as a mighty man of God. He began to use astrology and teach them how to use the, the, the stars and all the abominations before God. But God said, you know what? I'm not going to destroy mankind this time with a flood. He promised he wouldn't do that. This time, I'm going to create a people that will take my a godly legacy on and judge this wickedness what did he do he created look at somebody and say Israel <laughs> he created Israel through Abraham's seed he created a, a, a people that would honor him he gave them laws and rules and told them don't be like these worldly folk don't be like these the Babylon and, and, and Nimrod no you worship me I'm your only God he gave them rules through Moses don't you understand Abraham constantly fought giants hybrids it's like a sci-fi story Moses the Amalekites were giants him they're constantly going in and judging these wicked people and these wicked races fighting to the finish but they were God's people and they were holy they were set apart and the seed of Abraham was called to fight the Nephilim spirits are y'all still with me I hope y'all are getting a picture here. And then eventually, you know, as they begin to fight and fight and fight, the inevitable, begin, the inevitable begins to happen. One day they're fighting and start losing. Been winning ever since. Don't even know what it feels like to lose. Start losing. And Joshua says, hey, God, we losing. We're your chosen people. We're supposed to be winning. God says, something is wrong. You have sin in your camp. Now listen, please. There's no way you're going to fight evil with evil. You are set apart, called out, peculiar people carrying the bloodline that will produce the seed of the woman. You can't do what the world is doing and win. So Joshua, they go looking in the tents and they found Achan, found junk in his tent, went and got all the junk out. Burned him up, killed him, his family, everything, destroyed it all and said, okay, God, we're holy again. Start winning the battles again. This is the real battle of good and evil. And then we know that over time that kept happening, that situation, but Israel, God created judges to begin to judge Israel so that they would stay pure and holy before God. Are y'all with me? And this is the stories that happened around all of this time and these different things. And I want you to understand something. Luke 11 and 24 is a very important passage. It says, when an unclean spirit, the spirit of the Nephilim, the hybrid spirit, go, has gone out of a person, it roams through waterless places. I believe that's a reference to the flood. Waterless places in search of a place to rest and finding none it says I will go back to my house from which I came But when you destroy their bodies, they have nowhere to go 
understand this right here. If we're talking about giant, powerful, enlightened beings that once roamed the earth, they lose their bodies, they're going to want to be a worship deity again. That's why they jump in Nimrod and become great and try to get back up to heaven because they can't go back on their own. Try to get, build a way through the Tower of Babel. They jump in Semiramis and begin to understand the stars and astrology and create all this mythology and all this wickedness and witchcraft. They begin to jump in beings, Anubis and all these different gods of Egyptians and all these different Greek gods and all these different ones that were lifted up as great. They jump in them so that they can absorb the worship of people because they were once great powerful beings are y'all with me now but when they have nowhere to go they search something that is very important about symbols and I talked about symbols in depth in part four I can't go into all the symbols but I want you to understand something by some very important people on symbols real quick before we go into the rest of it symbolism is the language of the mystery says Manly P. Hall his name will sound familiar to you uh, by symbols, men have ever sought to communicate to each other those thoughts which transcend the limitations of language. So basically, with symbols, you can say certain things without saying them. Are y'all with me? As you would see, the capstone on the pyramid, this is a message. Some of you don't know what that message is, but there is that open eye, which is the third eye, the eye that makes you God. And then here is an unfinished pyramid, which represents an unfinished tower, which represents Babylon, I mean the Tower of Babel. Are y'all with me? So this eye is going to eventually cap this and become a capstone, this piece right here, and complete the work that was started. What is that message? That message is that the eye of Nimrod, the eye of Horus, the eye of Osiris, the all-seeing eye, the eye that if you eat off the tree, you will be a god. That eye belongs to someone that can complete this work. Hope y'all are still with me. And we understood in part four, we talked about Freemasonry. I hope you get it so you can understand. Freemasonry uses this symbolism because Freemasons believe in the great architect of the universe, which is not God, but that is Osiris, that is Nimrod, great architect. Why is he a great architect? Because he's building. What is he building? He's building a porthole up to heaven so he can be ruler as God. Are y'all still with me? I want you to get this stuff now. Some of it's going to go pretty quick. But they believe, the, 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 the Freemasons believe that Nimrod or Osiris is going to come back and he's going to finish the work that he started. That's why their symbol is the protractor. And that's why they believe that he's the great architect. He's a builder. He built the tower. A very important man in history. This is Aleister Crowley. He's known as the most wicked man that has ever lived. 33rd degree Freemason. Crowley was the foremost Satanist of the modern era. He made no bones about the fact that he served Lord Satan. He was so evil his own mother called him the beast. He called himself regularly by this name and by the number 666. Crowley, this is very important, pay attention, devised a hybrid brand of black magic that is in vogue today. He was convinced that he was incarnated, or he, he was incarnating a new magical era that would supersede Christianity. Here's his eye. He believed in opening up that eye. So you can understand magic and other dimensions. You can tap into knowledge. Eat off the tree. He had this book 777 about quabalistic teachings and writings. Basically the book shows you how to tap into an ancient old one. So that you can assert power for today. If you want to be a powerful 
musical artist. If you want to be a world-renowned actor, singer, or performer, this book, 777, teaches you how to find an old Nephilim spirit, what they call old ones. Summon that spirit in you by rituals and use that power for influence over people. Some of the things he taught, he said, let him train himself to think backwards, talking about his pupils, by eternal means and set forth by the following. Let him learn to write backwards, not just writing backwards, but putting messages and symbols backwards that the average eye couldn't understand. Let him learn to walk backwards. That means looking like you're going forward, but you are really moving backwards. Let him learn to listen to records back then reversed. That means listen to the hidden messages that come forth in a backwards message because you understand there's no way you can say a literal series of words forward to produce something backwards. It has to be a spiritual event only. So whenever you hear backwards messages, you say, now, if I write it down, it doesn't say that. That's because it's a spiritual occurrence that can't be explained. That's why he said, let him practice doing that. Instead of I am he, let him say EMI. These are Alistair Crawley's magic tips. Y'all still with me? Oh, it's about to get good. Look at somebody say, it's going to get good. Trust me. First group that really, really tapped into the power of Aleister Crawley and used his magic in 777 and his methods of channeling Nephilim spirits were the Beatles. Beatles still famous today. They just came out with a Beatles rock band game for the young folks to be introduced to Aleister Crawley's first pupils. Alistair Crowley, I mean, uh, the Beatles put backwards messages in their music saying serve Satan and worship Satan. See, the thing is, when you make a deal with these Nephilim spirits to come and make you famous, you have to signal people so that those that are followers of Satan or those that are enlightened or have knowledge can see the symbols and know who you're working for. See, there's not anybody that fools with Crowley that doesn't signal you that they're with Crowley. They will let you know. The Beatles, how did they let you know? They came out with this Sgt. Pepper album, and if we look real close, there he is. Alistair Crowley. 666, the beast. Alistair Crowley shows up in other places. Bam. I got to walk heavy. You know, church folk trust the government. Oh, they believe that everything is going to be all right. even though their Bible that they say they read tells them, pray for those in leadership. Why? Because they're evil. They're Freemasons. And you is coeptus is translated, the true translation is, he approves our undertaking. Who is he? Nimrod, the great architect of the universe. That's his eye. There's his unfinished tower. Folk want to make this holy. God's great undertaking. <laughs> it's God, all right, but it ain't the God. A 
God's undertaking. Novus Ordo Seclurum, a new order of the age, or as we would put it, or as one of the famous Bush presidents would say, a new world order. Unfinished pyramid, unfinished tower, and the eye is coming. To finish his work. Y'all still with me? Now if you don't want your dollar, give it to me. I ain't scared of Nimrod. Let's have some sense, amen? Folks would get my videos and, oh, so I'm not supposed to eat, I, ain't, I mean, I can't spend no money. I said, they just write checks and get a credit card you're scared of the dollar good gracious I'm just giving you information and they tell you not to spend it now you really need to give it come on put that bring out the buckets get rid of them Nimrod dollars there's an organization of 300 men there's an organization of 13 men which are represented by the 13 steps leading up this pyramid this group is called the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, the ones that see through the third eye and know what you don't know. They are at work fast to fix this situation and complete this work. Google will be busy tonight, amen? Get to Googling, I always tell you. So Alistair Crowley even influenced Franklin D. Roosevelt, FDR, reading the writings of Alistair Crowley and decided our money is the perfect place for his eye. So he began to channel the spirits. A president? Yes. Channel the spirit. Why? Power. If he can dig in and find an old one that used to rule and be great, get that in him, he can be great as well. Worshipped by you. Oh, I'm preaching now. I don't even have to show Beyonce. Look at somebody and say, yes, you do, yeah. If it's going to be a hip-hop message. One artist that was influenced heavily by Aleister Crowley when he said, write backwards, sing backwards, listen to records backwards, Prince. You know, folks are shocked. Have you seen Prince? What you, look at somebody and say, what you shocked about? Prince put his hair up against any woman in here and beat you. You be trying to hide your head if he's sitting next to you. Prince, make your hair look like nothing. Stand next to some little girls in here and his body will tear the ears up. Be trying to hide yourself, Prince. Finer than women. And we watch and listen to this stuff and I'm like, he ain't nothing wrong with Prince. What? Helen Keller, no. <laughs> Helen Keller, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is 1999 CD album cover, records, LPs, with no CDs. Prince took Alistair Crowley's advice a lot, he mimicked him a lot. He infused it in this Prince album. If you read it forwards, it's not telling you anything, but if you flip it backwards, it is, there's a message. It says 666 with a male organ and evil. That's what Alistair Crowley said, do. That's not enough for you when Prince won a gold album for this? Look how he designed his album. Third eye, the eye, Adam and Eve, eat off the tree, and your eye, what God don't want you even dealing with, you'll be enlightened. Can I preach in here? Oh, y'all, I haven't even started yet. I promise. 
Alistair Crowley wrote a book called The Book of the Law. This is the symbol. His one law was this. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. So he believed, do whatever you want to do. That is the rule. Do what thou wilt. This is something Alistair Crowley said. He said, all may understand in instantly that their souls, their lives, and every relation with every other human being and every circumstance depends upon magic and the right comprehension and right application thereof. That's in his book, 777. He stresses magic to open a person up for spiritual inhabitants. So Nephilim can have a place to rule. I mean, if you up in a concert and 15,000 people are out there chanting your name, the Nephilim has found his place again. If you're a spirit and don't have a body, and then you can jump into a world leader, maybe even a president. And everybody put your picture on their shirts. I'm just preaching, don't leave. Boy, I'm black for you know the triggers. Be out of here. Have to take off an early. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Look at somebody and say, don't be naive. Gosh, don't be naive. We are called out sons and daughters of the Most High. We ain't supposed to be walking around blind. The Bible tells us we're not children of the dark. We're children of the light. You're supposed to know better. Look at somebody say, you're supposed to know better. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Spiritual wickedness where? What are we fighting, y'all? This organization is called Ordo Templi Orientis. It is known to every famous person as the OTO. This is an organization. I got a friend who's pretty famous. Well, we're not friends right now, but we were real close friends when he was on his way to be famous. Sold a million copies of an album, got a phone call. Told me. He said, man, I got a phone call from a group. It's a fraternal order for famous people, OTO. He said they made me an offer and wouldn't let me refuse it and basically told me that if I didn't join this organization, that my career would end. I would lose my record contract or I'd be tossed in jail on some charges or something. But they said if I joined it, I'll continue to be famous. This organization is called the OTO. It's the Order of the Temple of the East or the Order of Oriental Templars. This is an organization under the leadership at the time when Alistair Crowley was living. He led it, this organization, and he reorganized it around his law of Thelema, which is to do what thou wilt. Y'all remember that? Y'all got it? It was kind of a built around religious principles, but the religion was Satanism. Are y'all with me? So basically, this organization is what people would get into if they wanted to be famous. So if you wanted to be famous and have some power in the world or be known for your ability or whatever, you had to get in this organization because they had to make sure of a few things. They had to make sure that, one, you weren't going to tell on them, so they had to have something on you. So to be inducted in there, it says that the membership is based on an initiatory system with a series of degree ceremonies that use ritual drama to establish 
fraternal bonds. In other words, they make you like, if you're a man, they make you have sex with a man and they take pictures of it, you know, and they'll threaten to show it if you go, you know, public or they'll make you do something despicable and then they tell you that they will end your career if you ever come out and try to talk against the OTO because what the OTO is, it's a secretive organization that teaches you how to manipulate certain Nephilim spirits so these spirits can get in you, lift you up, make you famous. If you refuse it, you just won't be famous. How do they start people out? They start people out that will get in these organizations with this, satanic ritual abuse. They go find a child, small child, and when, let me read it to you, it's gonna make a little more sense. In satanic ritual abuse, an infant or child is chosen to be the special one. This is the one that is gonna grow up and be inhabited by a Nephilim, a special Nephilim spirit. So when it's one that wants to be great, they start these children out very young. Are y'all still with me? Child is chosen to be the special one through whom the cultists will be able to receive power. To receive power, there must always be a sacrifice. We know that. That's a kingdom principle. A helpless infant or child is chosen to be the living sacrifice unto Satan. The child is subjected to numerous painful and terrifying rituals whereby demons are summoned to come into the child, making him or her a literal battery of satanic powers that can be accessed by the cult members. So you got this little innocent child being raped and molested and everything so they can pull these spirits out and become one with them sexually and they can channel these spirits through this child. This child is none of the wise, or they don't understand what's going on. It's a child. The most common way these powers are accessed is by performing acts of sexual perversion on the child. Yeah. Some of these rulers believe that the secret to, uh, to eternal life or true power in this life is the molestation of a young child because you take their purity and you use it as power. This is why children are abused constantly, and these abused children grow up one day. A lot of times they grow up without knowledge of what happened to them. They just know they have a deficit, and they want somebody to approve of them. Not just mother and father, but they need a whole lot of people to approve of them because their self-esteem is gone. So what do they do? They get a talent. They get an ability. They're able to sing. They're able to act. They're able to perform. What do they do? They get up before people. When they get up before people, people clap. That's approval. They love it. They want some more. They'll do anything to get that role. They'll do anything to get that record deal. They will do anything, even sell their soul to the devil through the OTO to be famous. Not knowing that all along they were set up for this great spirit to inhabit them and receive the praise of men. Gothics, Satanists, occultists all believe that Satan was misjudged in heaven. If you ever wondered, how do you worship Satan? And he's Satan. Sound dumb, don't it? Well, they believe God did not give Satan the grace that he gave man. So they believe that Satan was done wrong and misjudged in heaven by God and was unfairly kicked out. And they believe that he will give them fame and fortune for pleading his case and standing against God. Y'all still with me? Who are these children? Molested? raped, abandoned, left, beaten, whatever happened when they were young, they grew up seeking the approval of people and they became what we know today as stars. This is part of the vision God originally showed me. Kiss, which is the knights in Satan's service, wearing paint, paint, that paint on their face is a symbol of death. They whiten out their faces and they put expressions on there. So they're really saying, I'm dead and something in me, I'm channeling it and it is living or expressing itself through me. In case you wondered. This is ACDC, which is Antichrist Devil Child on their album cover. This guy's showing you horns in his head. Mega Death. Look, this is the Rolling Stones. Look at the title of their album. Sympathy for the Devil because they believe the devil was misjudged and done wrong. 
This is Black Sabbath, which is a desecration of God's holy Sabbath. And of course, this is Led Zeppelin who wrote the backwards praise and worship song to Satan called My Sweet Satan. Forward, it's called Stairway to Heaven. If you play that song in its entirety backwards, it's a whole praise and worship song to Satan. They even bought Aleister Crowley's house and wrote the song in his house so they could channel the true spirit of the most wicked man that ever lived. It is the number one selling single of all times. Stairway to heaven. Go on YouTube, play it backwards. It, it's a praise of my kids hate when I do it. You know, every now and then I got to bring them in the room, just make sure they're right. We, we finna hear Starway to Heaven. I'm finna play it backwards. Better do what I say. Okay, Daddy, yes. Please don't. No, something about writing a whole song forward and it's praising Satan backwards. Nephilim, satanic ritual abuse. This is Marilyn Manson. See why he paints his face white? He claims to be dead and inhabited by Satan. This right here, watch these symbols because we're going to use them later. This right here is the upside down pentagram. Alistair Crowley taught in his book 777 that there was special magic in the pentagram. So when you channel through the pentagram, you get a special satanic anointing according to Alistair Crowley. He has teachings on YouTube. I hope and pray you don't listen to them. 666, of course, is the mark of the beast, the name of the devil's number, the number of his name. He, uh, the Bible said you will not be able to buy or sell in the last days unless you have the mark of the beast or the beast owns you or you pledge your allegiance to the beast or you are on the beast side. I have to paraphrase it because folk don't understand. Here's the pentagram again, same symbol. Inside this pentagram is a goat's head, which that goat is the half man, half woman goat called Baphomet. If you've seen the movie 300, Pan, who is actually Baphomet, is the goat head. He was playing like a harp in the movie. It was creepy. I don't know why they did that. But the Baphomet is the goat's head, and he's a representative of Satan. But what he really represents is the scapegoat of the children of Israel because the Bible tells us that they were commanded by the priest to put their sins into this goat and drive this goat over the cliff to destroy the sins. Well, a Satanist will say, hey, bring that goat back. We're going to worship him because he represents sin. This right here, of course, is skull and bones. It's always represented uh, death or destruction. It's used in Satanism and Freemasonry quite frequently. And this is Anton LaVey, the creator of the Church of Satan. He said he was inspired to create it by his teacher and mentor, Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley gave it to him, and then he gave it to Marilyn Manson. Now Marilyn Manson is the chief high priest of the Church of Satan. Are y'all still with me? And of course, I've already explained this. I explained it a little earlier, but that is the Tower of Babel, the Eye of Nimrod, and that is the great undertaking of the coming, as they say, coming one who is called the one or the fallen, or, you know, I mean, we, we're hearing about it in movies and everything else, hearing about it in 2012. This is when they say this event is supposed to happen. They're making it look like it's supposed to be a year of mass destruction. But really, it's the secret to it is that if you climb the 13 steps of this pyramid from 1776, you end up in their numerology at the year 2012. So they believe in, and all Illuminati and Satanists and all occultists are believing that 2012 is the year when the undertaking will be complete and the tower and that power from Nimrod will come in the incarnated one, which would be the son of perdition, the Antichrist. Y'all with me? So for the devil to get this into our young people, he, the Bible says God calls the young because they're strong, so the devil's automatically going to target the young because once you get the young going, there ain't no stopping them. So what the devil had to do was bring Satanism to a level where it could be accepted among us as just normal folk. They can hide and do all that weird stuff in the Freemason and all that, you know, all that's hidden, but for it to come out into the open and be openly worshipped by them, they have to create what we know as a subculture 
culture. A subculture is a break off extension of a true parent culture. So when it's a subculture, you take the ideas of a parent culture and you deconstruct them and create an understanding that usually, in most cases, only is prosperous or works to the benefit of the creators, but everybody else that follows and mimics it are usually in some kind of deficit. Are y'all with me? So they create goth. Celebration of death and darkness. Kids start walking around the school, whited out faces, whitewash walls. That represents death. Channeling ancient spirits. These are the children of molestation. These are the children that's been in satanic ritual abuse. Here they are. You got This is Brandon Lee. Of course, he gave his life for the movie he was in, The Crow. Here's another guy, these guys. And then, of course, the Grim Reaper is synonymous with goth because he represents the one that will come to take your soul. This is where the skull head is at its highest, I guess, in Satanism when it is worn or walked around by this grim reaper then of course movies twilight and all these vampire movies that highlight the undead and all of this witchcraft and stuff it became real popular in the 80s but i told you in the vision that it had to get deeper the devil had another plan he needed it among those that were more influential with the major part of our culture or society and of course then we know that hip-hop went goth so here comes the subculture of hip-hop and hip-hop begins to model death and destruction and darkness. So now you got not only suburban white youth and God doing it, but now you got young black boys walking around with skulls and demon faces all over their clothes, on earrings, got the belt. Oh yeah, they just brought God to hip hop. Biggie Smalls, here he is wearing a shirt with 666 on it. The mark of the beast. Look at these brothers. This brother got a new, one of the brand new Rockaware shirts, which I don't wear his stuff because this shirt, Rockaware, says friend or foe, and it's a picture of Jesus. Friend or foe? That means friend or enemy. Friend or enemy? Jesus? Yeah. They're here, right here is, what's his name? Game? Yeah, pointing to the game, pointing to his marijuana leaves on his shirt. Ain't that illegal? Here's this brother tattooed all up. I mean, he's got a bandit. He's like, I'm going to rob you. I'm going to rob you. Buy my album or I'm going to rob you. I mean, look at him. I mean, somebody is hiding their purse right now from the picture. But these brothers are showing you an evil. It's celebration of evil. This right here is plies. Look at him. Draws showing. Why you want to show your draws? Don't you know that's nasty and gay? If you knew anything about prison, you'd understand what the showing of the draws mean. Men ain't supposed to show their behinds like that. Only when somebody want to get it. Can I tell the truth in here? Boy, somebody. Somebody just offended. Oh, ooh, I can't believe he's talking like this. Watch next Friday, yesterday. Got the kings of comedy. Hip-hop goes goth. Keeps going goth. Celebration of death, darkness. What did Alistair Crowley say? Magic. Open you up, put a spirit in you, change who you are. Look at the cover story in Rolling Stone, a woman possessed. This article says, Beyonce is gripped by a spirit so powerful it even has a name. A powerful spirit? A spirit in her to be worshipped by men and women? How many Christians went to her concert? Look at him. Look at the difference. Look at this. Is that the same woman? She says it's not. She's openly telling you that there is a spirit in her working in her when she's performing. So the times you know her, you're entertaining a spirit. 
or entertain by a spirit. Yeah, true definition of entertain, detain so something can enter you. So, Beyonce says, I have someone else that takes over when it's time for me to work. That's when y'all know her. And when I'm on stage, this alter ego that I've created that kind of protects me and who I really am. Let's talk about this for a second. Y'all still with me? Oh, it's going to get good. Look at her. What is she doing? What is she doing? See, what did I tell you? They have to signal you to let you know where your praise is going. She's putting triangle over here she's showing you horns this is the worst one she has a motorcycle handlebars but they're in the shape of the five point pentagram and in the middle of the pentagram is the half man, half woman, goat, Baphomet. The symbol that is used to channel Satan from the 777 of Aleister Crowley. This is what separates the little singers that are in Houston right now and the one that got large. O T O. Can I keep going? This was an old movie called Metropolis. And in this movie, this lady was a nice, kind lady. They took her image and put it in this evil robot, and this robot was an influencer, I'm paraphrasing, I'm making it real quick, was an influencer of the culture of men that were there, the working class, and the, you know, so she was embodied, or she was translated to become this evil robot, but she kept the nice image of the woman, and she went around seducing men, and messing over men, and really trying to mess up men, so it was like an entity that lived within a beautiful woman. Are y'all with me? And this is why the five-point pentagram is behind her. Beyonce has an act in her concert where she dresses up like evil Maria in Metropolis and does the whole act of being that evil entity. Now they say you have to use magic. It's all magic. Alistair Crowley says learn to do all these things with magic. Her latest video is called Sweet Dreams and the video opens up with one of the most demonic things I think I've seen lately, as of late. Keep looking, just watch carefully. This is Beyonce wrestling in her sleep, and then she levitates. But you missed the significant part of that. There is a dove on top of her, and the dove is doing what Aleister Crowley said to reverse what happened with Jesus. See, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that the dove came down Representing the Holy Spirit. Alistair Crowley says, reverse that. The dove is flying backwards, going the opposite direction. Can I keep going? Look at somebody and say, don't leave. I've just begun. I got to. He got to be in every video. <laughs> this is the head Nephilim. He's the head. He has the head chiefest Nephilim spirit. They can say what they want about the backward mass. I tell people all the time, I don't need the backwards message. I'm talking about the stuff he did forward. He got a new Rockaware shirt called Return of the God. Return of the God. Is he talking about himself as God? Yes. 
But how does he become God? Because people are worshiping him. Why are they worshiping him? Because a Nephilim spirit, an old one, is using his body. Oh, I'm preaching now. Just give me some time. Here's his song, Run This Town, the new song. This is Rock Nation. Pledge your allegiance. Do you know what that really means? Join up, sign up with Rockefeller. He says, get your fatigue on all black everything. All black, black cards, black cars, all black everything. Why all black? Goth. The celebration of death and destruction. That's what goth wears, black. He says, yeah, call me Caesar. I'm dark Caesar. Please follow the leader. So Eric B, we are. Microphone fiend, it's the return of the God. Peace, God. Ain't nobody fresher. In his new song that he just performed on the demonic VMAs the other day, he says, Hail Mary to the city, you're a virgin and Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. See, they're getting bold, y'all. You know why? Because ain't nobody saying anything. You went shopping for your child and you was in the Rockaway section the whole time. I warned you in 2000 that it was going to get this bad. Wouldn't nobody listen to the little freckle face boy from Fort Worth. He can't know what he's talking about. Now your children sit in church and can't move if they want to. Because they got the fatigue of Rockefeller on. Rockefeller. Oh, it gets worse. Here he is. What did I say that Alistair Crowley said? That the whole law was do what thou wilt. That's the new line of Rockaway. Do what thy wilt. He's not even hiding it, man. It ain't no secret message. It ain't scrambled up backwards. It ain't no remixed version. It's on his shirt. The law of the most wicked man that ever lived. How to channel a Nephilim spirit and get everybody in the audience throwing up your eye in the pyramid. Do what thy wilt. New shirt called the Masters of the Craft and have the pyramid and all the Egyptian symbols. Here is Baphomet again. Do what thou wilt. Look at the audience in this concert. Everyone in the audience putting their eye, the third eye, the tree God forbid man to partake of. They're showing God, we don't care what you say. We are enlightened. Yeah, these are hip hoppers I'm talking about. Here he is. Rock aware. See the third eye of Horus? That's that third eye. His rock aware symbol just reversed it. His logo. Same symbol. Here he is with Beyonce with skull and bones on his shirt. And here he is in concert with a crystal skull behind him. It's pretty bold, isn't it? Kanye Mess! Yeah, I'm very militant when it comes to this stuff. I get mad about my Jesus. I don't like folks blaspheming God. I don't like folks talking against. I don't, I don't like folks that will take a dollar to destroy my children. You in for a fight when you do that, buddy. My children mean something to me. You want to come get them, you got to fight me. Kanye West posed for the cover of Complex and he told him he wanted his eyes lit up. This is a sign of illumination, meaning that he is illuminated. He can see what you can't. I told you, what did I say? They have to always signal you and let you know, O-T-O. Look at his shirt right here, Baphomet. 
Here he is throwing up the symbol. And then this right here should have told you something. But, you know, church folks slow, you know. So during the youth functions, they sing in Jesus Walks at the youth functions in the churches because he has a song called Jesus Walks. But then when they asked him about Jesus and they said, do you believe in Jesus? He said, I believe in Jesus as an icon. But I don't feel the responsibility to put my life on Jesus. Why did he say that? Because his life's somewhere else. O-T-O. Here's a phrase that he has in one of his raps. He says, I'm so illuminated I can glow in the dark. Meaning that third eye of the Illuminati. Illumination is open. Are y'all with me? Here's his concert tour, glow in the dark. Look at him. His eyes lit up right here. Look what he's doing. Oh, I wish you would listen to me because I have some truth for you, I promise. This one don't take rocket science. And yet the children still have it in their iPods. You know, they're sitting there, oh, I knew she was like that and have it in their iPod. Yeah, I knew she was devilish. She has a song called Disturbia. Here she is right here, dressed as an executioner. She has skulls on every finger and she's throwing up the devil's horns. Here she is with the eye in the pyramid. Boy, that Alistair Crowley got around, didn't he? Yeah. Disturbia. Her song is talking about the Nephilim spirit that is inside her or how it got in her. Listen to the words it says. It's a thief in the night to come and grab you. It can creep up inside you and consume you. A disease of the mind, it can control you. It's too close for comfort. Put on your brake lights. You're in a city of wonder. Ain't gonna play nice. Watch out. You might just go under. Better think twice. Your train of thought will be altered. So if you must falter, be wise. Your mind's in disturbia. It's like the darkness is light. Think backwards. The Bible says we are not children of the dark. Oh, this is terrible right here. Here she is from her video, Umbrella. And she just took it to a whole nother level. She's in the pyramid now, and then she thrust her body into the shape of the pentagram coming out of and turning the triangle into a five-point pentagram. Here's her hand with her hieroglyphic tattoo going down it. Yeah, these are the number one hip-hop artists, singers, and performers, R&B, that are out there. She says in this song, Umbrella, these fancy things will never come in between. You're part of my entity here for infinity. She's not talking about a human here. Can I keep preaching? Yeah. Shh. This is Lil Wayne. This is him performing, and his eyes are doing what when I'm, you know, when I'm casting demons out of people. I see this a lot, their eyes roll to the back of their head. What the demon wants to do is make a person lose consciousness because you can't address a spirit in an unconscious person. So the demon immediately tries to knock them out. Like when they brought the boy with the demon in him to Jesus, the first thing the Bible says he did was it tore him and he looked like he was dead. The demon tried to get smart and outsmart Jesus, knock him out so Jesus could not address the spirit that was in him because you need consciousness to do that. Are y'all with me? So usually their eyes will roll to the back of their head or they'll pass out so you can't deal with what's inside of them. This is 
a manifestation here. This is him. He has hieroglyphics tattooed all over his body, wearing two crosses, which is also a symbol of I am God. Here he is, smoked out, of course, and then with the vampire fangs to let you know he's after your flesh. He has four teardrops on his eyelids, and these teardrops stand for people that he has murdered. Here is a statement that he made about his teardrops. Here he is throwing up the devil sign, and then he has these hieroglyphics even on his face, devil symbols. He says, the first day I got a teardrop, talking about the symbol of murder, I asked my buddy, he was with me, and he said, no, ask my buddy, he was with me, I lied. I called his mom, he said, I called my mom and asked her, can I get one when I had already gotten one? His mom says, when you get in, come by so I can see how you look with it, because I was thinking about getting one my blank self. Now this is murder we're talking about. And then he just comes out and says, you don't have to, you know, we don't have to be rocket scientists to figure out the symbolism of a, of a symbol on your face. No, he just comes out and says, we don't play. No, we don't. I don't. I'm not going to rap about you, man. I will murder you, your family, your children, a newborn. I don't give a blank. I could never go to hell because I would take over. Here's one of his songs, y'all, and this is just unbelievable. Please bear with me with this profanity. I'm trying to skip over it. I don't want to paint a picture, but I got to let you know what's going on. Is that all right? I ain't going to cuss. I'm not that kind of preacher. They out there now, but that's not me. Unblank, believable, Lil Wayne's the president. F them even if they're celibate. Rape them. The ground shall break. Now, when did a rapper start using the word shall? He's trying to sound biblical. The ground shall break when they bury him. Talking to about himself in third person as if he is God. Better lock, lock my casket tight, baby, so I don't let the devil in. Nigga, I'm just, it's just me and my guitar. Yeah, I'm heavy metal and what? You can get the Led Zeppelin. Stairway to heaven. They got to signal you. Let me skip down. He says, this is the Carter, the Carter three, the New Testament. I'm the God, and this is what I bless them with. This is Bishop Lamont. You're about to hear about him. He's about to blow up this dude. They've been working on his album for 10 years. Listen to this blasphemous stuff. His name is Bishop Lamont. Lamont. Here he is posing like he's Serapis Bay, you know, the guy who keeps recreating himself in Egyptian gods or whatever that spirit. He says, rejoice, real hip hop is back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, church. Let's open our Bibles, wrap our recitals. Let's discuss these whack rhyme back sliders. Dre produced his album, I think. He says, in the chorus, congregation, please stand, receive the blessing from my mother blank hands. Sip holy water, blah, blah, blah. Hip-hop is dead, blah, blah, blah. I can't even finish that. Then at the end, Bishop, uh, he says, let me welcome you to Babylon. OTO, devil worshipers, demon Nephilim spirit. Spirits have to go somewhere. And they don't want to just go anywhere. They want to get in somebody that can get them the worship they got when they were an old one. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Folks got it, and they have to always signal you. Here's a very popular signal that we see a lot of them doing. Here he is. You see that? What is that? That's the eye again. That, no, that all see in third eye. But then they do their fingers like this. You got a camera. Where's the eye? I mean, I don't want to do it. They're they doing it. This is... Jim, uh, uh, Jim Jones, this right here is Lil Wayne, and of course this is Lady Gaga. And y'all know Lady Gaga is supposed to be some kind of hermaphrodite or something, and she just performed on the VMAs and did a death ritual for the whole audience and sacrificed herself for the VMA awards. These are the same awards that Jack Black told everybody to catch hands and pray to Satan. Pastor, they're not playing anymore. You know, if the church is going to be quiet and they're going to ignore the warning, they're going to go full throttle. 
Children right now didn't want to come tonight. They're out at a football game or doing something else. They don't want to hear this. And his parents don't want him to hear this because then the parents, you got to look at their record collection. When we, look at somebody and say, when are we going to get serious about this? But what they're doing, they're throwing up something that is called the three rings. It's a symbol of Satanism. It's three sixes. You make the one ring and the three fingers. And because you can only make one ring, it's got to be three rings, a ring for each finger that makes six, six, six. So they throw that up. They'll be in concert. You'll see them throw it up. One, one guy who has made it a part of who he is, I mean, he's the most famous three ring thrower upper, I think, in the industry. He's just straight up letting you know, I'm famous, I got this demon in me, I'm feeding it, and you're going you to celebrate the spirit in me when you listen to his stuff while he's throwing up the three rings. He even named one of his CDs three rings. His name is T-Pain. See, there he is, three rings, three rings, three rings. Can I preach in here? Is anybody liking this? You know, I'm the type of person, tell me the truth. Even if it embarrasses me and make me look stupid, I'm gonna get up from that because I'm a man, I can handle it. Tell me the truth. Don't let nobody pull a fast one on me and my family. Tell I told you when they kicked Satan out of heaven, he said what he was going to do. He wanted his place back. He wanted to be worshipped. Oh, yeah, Chris Brown. Now, shh, quiet. If you think this is one of, gonna be one of, be, I mean, if you think this is gonna be one of those messages where you're gonna pick and choose which artist is and which artist is not, you got the wrong message. Because in order to be famous, you gotta give up something. The devil is not gonna allow you to stand before his folks and get glory and then not come back to him. So they're going to they're gonna signal you. Chris Brown got two tattoos on his hands. Here they are. Two skulls with halos. What do the halos represent? The angel, yeah, but what does the skull represent? So we're talking about fallen angel. That's the fallen. The fallen one. Fallen angel. Who's the fallen angel? Nephilim. Lucifer. He even has a song called Fallen Angel. I thought he was talking about a girl. No, not this time. Because he says in the song, if I could take a trip to outer space, she would be the one I would see. Really? Out of space? When I get to heaven's gate, she will welcome me with her arms. Heaven's gates will shadow me brighter than the sun. Transform herself into an angel of light? She hasn't had a fair chance. What? Sympathy? So I'll give her one. Let me tell you who she is. She's a fallen angel sent from heaven up above. A fallen angel. A Nephilim, he said, I tell you, Nephilim spirit fell from heaven and he's in love. He even says it in here. He said, I would help her mend her broken wings, but I don't want to give up everything that I've gained. Good night. T.I. said it better than anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, T.I. You thought he was... You thought, but he has a song called Trap Music, and he's sitting there telling you, listen, Pops, you want to know a little more about rap? 
the first rule, and this is real, it ain't just a record deal, it's a trap. But the saddest part about the Nephilim, the devil, he ain't ever satisfied with his folks. He got to always. And the thing about the truth behind hip hop and G Cred, he ain't ever satisfied. Can I tell it all? Yeah. Because see, the world's supposed to act like that. Yeah. Heavy metal artists, the, the singers, and T.I. T. and all them, T. Paint, they're supposed to do that. They're sinners. They're supposed to worship the devil. They on his side. They're supposed to use Nephilim spirits. That's who they are. But the danger comes when the enemy brings it. into the church. Can you imagine? We're at, a we're at a point right now where we go to church and be entertained by fallen spirits. Nephilim. Men that's been sexually abused and now they abuse sexually and spiritually. Lifted themselves up as pastors and leaders. But at night they dance with the Nephilim embodied by spirits to have a whole lot of members can I tell the truth channelers in the church really channeling spirits in the church You know, I don't preach a message so folks will like it. If I sold two DVDs, I'd give God the praise. Anybody that know me, you better know me better than that. I'm going to tell it just like God told me to tell it. I don't care. I don't care. What is Maimon doing in the church? See, what we do is we watch somebody else do it and we automatically assume it's good to do. But what we fail to do is to trace it back to when it was created to find out what its true meaning is. First of all, and they do it every year in New Orleans, they call it the Day of the Dead, and they paint their faces like this because they want to whiten out their face so that they could be embodied by a spirit and channel. This spirit can come in them and cause them to move and do these moves and they can usher in spirits. That's what it is. Let me read you something. It began in the theater of Dionysus in Athens. Dionysus is the god of the theater. Now, you know when these gods fall and they die, these spirits that were being worshipped through them go out and try to find other ways to be worshipped. Are y'all still with me on that part? You still understand? Mass actors performed outdoors in daylight at festivals to honor Dionysus, the god of the theater. Mime contained acts of magic. They would do magic and appear, disappear. What did the magic? Alistair Crowley said everything has to do with magic, sex, and simulated nudity. It was a vulgar and sexually perverse form of of entertainment it was shunned by the apostles in the early church after the fall of the Roman Empire the Christian church showed great opposition to this body and indecent association of the mind they excommunicated all the performers closed down all the theaters but despite this a basic form of mind survived as the church began to adopt society's code of morality Plays begin to appear with religious themes. Mine came back in. Now, this is a great, one of the greatest students of, well, teachers of mine. His name is Samuel Avital. He's a director, Le Centre de Silence. You know, he's not from here. This is what he says. He says, mime is more than an art. It is a way of life. 
heard that before, right? It requires metaphysical as well as physical awareness. Metaphysical? It is an extension of the life force for channeling energies into a symphony of being. Mime is not just the skill of acting without words. It is a process of expanding, here's that word, the consciousness beyond mere sensitivity, time, and space, and communicating clearly with artistic skill on stage in order to reflect the human condition. So they're basically just telling you it's a way of channeling spirits so that they could be expressed through you. That's why you wipe your face out like the dead so that you can be, something can express itself through you. Oh yeah, our church is getting full of it. Here are some brothers and this is some things that are happening that used to be a part of goth and punk rock, black fingernails, spikes and chains. They come in church like this, you know, with the mohawk, which the mohawk was a symbol of rebellion that they wore in punk rock. Y'all remember that? And then you have the women that darken out their eyes wearing the black fingernail. This dude even has a t-shirt with a skull on. They wear these to church now because this t-shirt has a scripture on it. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor anything shall separate me. That's a scripture with the skull on it. Yeah, this is what they're doing to the church because they want these spirits channeled in the church. And Lord, do we need to talk about the singers? You know, I try, I try my best. We try to listen to the radio on Sunday morning. We turn it on, firehouse, you know, try to play it through the speakers. And every time we do, here it comes. The God in me. And I'm like, oh, my, my kids, everybody, turn it off, go turn it off. I gotta go turn it off. Cause I refuse. It's watching the video for this song, y'all. I could not believe it. Kanye West, O-T-O, Illuminated, Third Eye Kanye is in their video. Why is he in the video? Worse than that, Common, who says Christ is a lie and a farce? Who says that Mohammed will always speak through him? Denies Jesus Christ, why is he in this video? And then... Umbrella Boy, <laughs> Farnsworth Bentley, holds the umbrella for P. Diddy. I'm sure he's holding more than umbrella, right? <laughs> Why are they in this video? I'm gonna tell you, the first line of the song will tell you. They say, you're so fly, watch this, you're so high. Lucifer said when he got kicked, one of the reasons he got kicked out of heaven is because he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will mount the congregation high in the side of the north, most high. See, north is most high because if you go all the way north and look up, there's more north. Why? It's the God in me. And Common says he's God. And Kanye says he's God. And Farnsworth said he's a God. It's a 5% message from the gods and the earth that say, peace, God. Indy Ire came out with a song years ago that said, I see God in you. She wasn't saying that I see God the Father in you. She was saying, I see you as a God, because to five percenters, the black man is God. In my first video, Truth Behind Hip Hop, first, I showed you a backwards message. Anybody remember that? It was called a Mr. Ouija. You hold it up to the mirror and you speak into your own soul. Remember that? 
The guy's responsible to, for putting that in 10 million albums that were sold so that 10 million young people could have the opportunity to speak a death sexual curse on their own soul. Those guys are called the Bone Thugs in Harmony. They're the ones that put it in their CD cover. Well, Bone Thugs say, we'll get back at G. Craig for exposing that. And they went and got a gospel artist and put her on their album. Why would you sing with a group that mocks Jesus? How did they mock Jesus? In this video right here. Y'all remember the video, the first of the month? The Bible said when the Holy Spirit fell, it appeared upon them as cloven tongues of fire. Y'all remember that? Bone thugs in harmony openly mocked the day of Pentecost. Look at this video clip. This is first of the month, and here's a skull. You'll see a skull, and there they are. They believe when they rap, they're speaking in other tongues and they're mocking with the cloven tongues of fire. And you're going to get a gospel artist. Can I tell the truth in here? Bishop Eddie Long. You know, shh, people that don't know me, they think I just pick these people and I'm like just going against God's anointed. They don't understand that we've tried to contact these people and they just pretty much tell me where I can go. Try to let them know, hey man, don't you know what you're doing, this and this and this, and they're like, So I got to go to you. This is his album called Revolution, and he has on this album Pastor Troy. Yeah, young folks know it's one of the most demonic rappers. There he is, Jagged Edge, Bone Crusher, Killer Mike, David Banner, the guy who says he was baptized in dirty water. Young Dirty, that's his son. But this is not why I'm bringing him up. I'm bringing him up because in one of his church services at New Birth, T.I. preached. T.I. preached a sermon at New Birth. All the news cameras there, everybody want to see T.I. preach. T.I. T.I. You know, young folks can't believe it. Old folks don't know what I'm talking about. Young folks like, the end is here. Yeah. Not only that, he went into the youth room, youth room right here. This is a YouTube clip. It's on YouTube. Went into the youth room, and I want you to see what this young girl does while he's standing up addressing the youth in this room. They couldn't even get her off of him. Look. No, it's not funny. That's not funny. This is a young girl being subjected to some grown man's desire to be famous or be something in this life. She's drawn to the spirit. Do you think these spirits don't want to be worshipped? These spirits draw your children. They're drawn to them. And you're going to bring this guy in your service and christen him with an opportunity to preach a message? Fight this girl off him in the youth room. What must these children think about salvation? Let's, let's look at some of T.I.'s lyrics right quick and then we're going to move forward. Y'all still with me? He says in this song, hey, front and center a winner, not a beginner. Niggas can't afford dinner trying to put something in you. I'm going to stimulate your physical and mental. What I got on my dental turns saints into sinners. Yeah, he preached at new birth. No is what you been, begin to say, but your feelings get in the way. Should you leave? Should you stay? Such a tough decision to make. I got you stuck between your heart and a hard place. I make you choose between the rod and what God say.
preached in a church, in a church, oh, that ought to make some, some folk in here a little upset. I got to go here to get to the next point. This is the pastor of hip hop. This is Hezekiah Walker. He calls himself the pastor of hip hop. But the problem is even greater than that because this guy right here calls himself one of the four founders of hip hop. This is KRS-One, the teacher. Knowledge reigns supreme on nearly everyone. That's what his name means. Me and KRS, one of KRS have gone back and forth since 2000. We first came out with this message. I've battled with his organization, the Temple of Hip Hop. They have elders in place. They have churches. They minister the religion of hip hop. They believe hip hop is a bona fide religion. I said that in 2000. Here is the song he has with KRS One's choir. The name of the song is called The Raptism. See, these Nephilim spirits got to get in the church. Folks in the world ain't saved no way. Listen to these lyrics. Knowledge reigns supreme. I beam through many images. My origin is a mystery like capstones on pyramids. The eye. Only those that got hip hop in them and not rap in them. What? I thought hip hop and rap was the same thing. Oh, I've been trying to tell you for years it ain't the same thing. Step up now and receive a holy dose from a holy host. I take a break from those rappers that only boast. And the choir says every day when you wake up, uh, you wake up to make up, you got a chance to make up. Remember, you are not just doing hip hop, you are hip hop. Now let me tell you how far this guy has taken it and I've been preaching and somebody owes me an apology. Because I've been telling them for years that hip-hop is a religion. They got the truth, Kurt Franklin, uh, uh, Ambassador, all of them. All those rappers got on TBN and said that I didn't know what I was talking about. Hip-hop wasn't a religion. And now, just recently released, hot off the presses, is the Gospel of Hip-Hop Bible, a New Testament by KRS-One. Can you imagine hip hop, a religion? So you gonna go take holy and put that in front of a religion? Do we put a holy in front of Buddhist? Listen to what KRS-One said about his new Bible. Rap, KRS-One has become an apostle. This is uh, all hiphop.com's article. KRS-One has become an apostle publishing a 600-page gospel of hip-hop dedicated to the spirituality and divinity of hip-hop. He says, in 100 years, this book will be a new religion on the earth. When it comes to hip-hop, KRS-One has always thought big. He said, I'm not just doing hip-hop. That's rap. He says, I am hip hop. And then he finally says, I respect Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, but their time is up. Can I preach in here? He says, but do not concentrate on the paper talking about the Bible, concentrate on the laws of the creator because when the paper's gone, it will deceive you but Allah will never leave you. Allah, I'm so sick of hearing black people call out to the name of Allah. Now, I understand, but listen to what I'm saying. I'm about to make a very good point here because these same guys, and let me calm down because I get upset on this part. These same guys, Farrakhan, all 
of them that call out the name of Allah will tell you that the blue-eyed, blonde-haired, white person that is the white devil oppressed us so we shouldn't worship the God of the white man which they consider Jesus Christ. But none of them talk about the greatest holocaust our planet has ever seen which is the Arab slave trade where they killed, castrated 20 million black people under the name of Allah. How are you going to try to blame the white man and, and they castrated and raped and killed some 20 million blacks during the Arab slave trade. It was the greatest slave holocaust of all times under the name of Allah, Islam. Oh, I'm trying to preach. I wish I had a few folks with me because I feel like this is going to shake something up in this nation because while you getting the bean pies and the Muhammad speaks you need to know the truth about what they say about your God you need to know the truth about what they say about Jesus Christ because if they, if they ain't believing in the Bible they have no truth for me we're getting in a confusing time where they're going to start trying to parallel and merge all these gods. They call themselves a Christian, but they're going to stand with Islam too. Then they're going to stand with the Hindu. Then they're going to stand for the homosexual. And they're going to try to merge all the gods because it's on our great seal. See, e pluribus unum, which is on the seal with the eagle, that means one God by many names. And finally, let me try to bring this to a close. But I can't close this out with talk, without talking about the king of pop. Oh, I need a little time. But what, what my studies on this man has done is really summed everything that I've been preaching for the last 10 years up in the one person. On the surface, people cried and wept and mourned. Churches celebrated and wore a glove and sung. They sung his songs and they didn't know that they were celebrating the most powerful Nephilim our music industry has ever seen. This ancient God that was in this man literally stole your heart. With some music when he transformed himself into a woman you didn't care stole your heart when child molestation charges were brought up against him you knew they were false because he stole your heart when he bought the Beatles anthology so he could channel Alistair Crowley through it. He stole your heart. When he practiced witchcraft and became one of the most powerful channelers that we've ever seen, ever. Because when I look at Michael Jackson, I see artists that sell a few thousand, maybe even a million albums. And these guys destroy themselves. These guys sell themselves. These guys channel spirits, pray to Alistair Crowley, all of that. And I looked at him and I said, if they do all of that for a million records, what does it take to become the king of pop? The king of the devil's music. I'm going to show you. First thing Alistair Crowley teaches you in the 777 is to channel a powerful entity. Most of the time you get it out of a child, we'll talk about that later. But when this entity comes upon you, so what he did, he went and found the worshipers of Sibyl, or we would say Sibel. Sibel was an ancient goddess. 
So those men that worship Sabel were different. They were called Corybots. Now you've heard the term, man, you're acting like a Corybot or you're acting Corybontus, which means wildly. But the group of men that cloned this phrase were worshipers of this goddess, Sybil, Sibel. And let me describe these to you. Now, these are some notes from any old encyclopedia. Corybontes, they had their hair dressed and waved like women. They were heavily made up with their faces resembling whitewashed walls. They were castrated and keepers of children and infants partaken in coming of age rituals and celebrations. They practiced magic and divination to make money. Listen to this. They made wild cries or high pitched shrills while they performed their dances to the music of pipes and dull beats of the tamarind. Listen, when the deity or the gods would enter into them, they were possessed by divine power. They would dance uncontrollably in ecstatic frenzy here are some pictures just so you can get a good look and I'm not listen y'all please be serious with me this is not funny at all this man died in this okay this is not funny but he literally got put on out magazines but just as like Michael, the archangel, I mean, the Bible says that we were made in God's image and his likeness. So our look is not far from God's look. But right here, they've got Michael and trying to make you think this is like Michael, the archangel, some seductive looking angel because he kept his face in an ambiguous fashion where he really was genderless. Corey Bonds. Let's go through some of his songs so you can kind of hear his signals because they always have to signal you. We are the world. There's a line in We Are the World that is so demonic it's hard to believe that folks sung this in their churches in celebration to Michael Jackson and it's down here. Michael wrote this part. It says, send them your heart. So they'll know that someone cares, y'all know, and your lives will be stronger and free. Y'all remember that? Then he says, as God has shown us, by turning stones to bread, if Jesus had obeyed Satan, and turn stones to bread, all of us would be lost right now. Folks didn't even get it. They waiting for me to finish the song. <laughs> Here is a song where he's describing the Nephilim spirit in him and telling you that the end is near. This is a song called Another Part of Me. There he is dressed up like evil Maria in the same thing like Beyonce wore. He said, we're taking over. We have the truth. This is the mission to see it through. Don't point your finger. Not dangerous. This is our planet. You're one of us. Okay, it sounds like he's talking something friendly or whatever, but listen. We're sending out a major love. This is our message to you. The planets are lining up. What does it mean in astrology? What does it mean in Greek mythology? What does it mean in the Mayans and the Sumerian cultures? All of these different cultures. What does it mean when the planets line up? That's the day that Nimrod comes and takes his throne and finishes the Tower of Babel, the uncapped pyramid. They are all in line waiting for you. Can't you see you're just another? Says in this song, Nasty boogie bugs me like somebody has drugged me. The spellbound rhythm gets on my feet. I changed my life completely. I seen the lightning leave me. And my baby just can't take her eyes off me. Look, the magic mu music moves me. That dirty rhythm grooves me. The devil's got into me with his dance. They won't believe it, Pastor, because it's Michael. 
I'm full of funky fever. A fire burns inside me. Boogie got me in a super trance. Blame it on the boogie. Quincy Jones said that when he finished this song, he couldn't stop dancing. He ran out in the street, and he was dancing uncontrollably. Oh, I'm not done. I haven't even started. There were three ways Michael Jackson would get his songs. You've got to hear this part. Because I believe this is what led to Michael Jackson's death. I hope they come talk to me about it because I'll give them some information from the Holy Ghost. I don't need a forensic scientist. Look at somebody and say, all you got to do is ask God. God laid this out to me as plain as day. The three ways Michael Jackson got his songs. The first way Michael Jackson said, he told Martin Brashear on an interview that he would climb a tree called the given tree, tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge. He climbed this tree and he would get his songs. Second way, Alistair Crowley said in his book, 777 that he had a room of mirrors and if you look into a mirror you can look into yourself and you can channel the spirits of those that were before you he's really saying that those that may have molested you or those that may have taken from you you can bring them back and ask them to be your guide and tell you why they did what they did to you so Michael Jackson created a mirror a room of mirrors that he could go in and channel spirits and Michael Jackson chose a specific spirit. He says this, he says, I have my own secret room with a moving wall and mirrors, okay? Same room that Aleister Crowley had. He says, this is where I talk to Liberace. I hear his voice in there. I feel his presence so very close to me. He's like my guardian angel. He even gave me permission to record his title, I'll Be Seeing You. That's in the Psychic News in 1987. Liberace? Homosexual. Flamboyant homosexual. You challenge, channel the spirit of the most flamboyant homosexual of our time? And the third way is the way I believe Michael Jackson died. He said that his best songs came in dreams. Michael Jackson would channel Morpheus, the god of dreams, who studied under Serapis Bay. Serapis Bay, Ser Serapis Bay is the image that Catholics use as the image of Christ, but it's not. He has the Ra, the sun god behind his head. He looks just like Christ, but it's not just like Semiramis and Nimrod, that whole thing I told you about earlier. But he was an Egyptian carnated god, so he would channel those spirits. He also channeled the spirits of Hypnos and Thanatos. Hypnos is the god of sleep. Thanatos is the god of death and their brothers along with Morpheus. Now what becomes very dangerous about what Michael was doing, if you read, Michael Jackson would sleep sometimes three and four days at a time because he was trying to get hit songs. He even said one time that he couldn't go to sleep. He said a spirit told him that if he did not get to sleep to get this song, the spirit is going to give it to Prince. This is where the rivalry between him and Prince birthed in the 80s, if y'all remember that. But Michael needed to sleep. So they began to sedate him heavily so he could sleep the amount of time he needed to sleep to get hits. But a 50-year-old body trying to do a world tour, hungry for the next hit song, the right dosage. I know some people are saying, well, you haven't really convinced me. I'm about to. Michael Jackson had two albums that told everything that he was doing. The first album he had that I'm going to show you is his history album. He built a statue of himself like Nebuchadnezzar because that Nephilim spirit in him wanted to be worshipped. But if you zoom into his arm, there's a number on his arm. 
And that number is seven, seven, seven. Alistair Crowley's book, seven, seven, seven. Quabalistic writings, channel Nephilim spirits for fame. Get your songs from the devil. There he is. The next album, he went a step further, and I'm about to try to bring this to a close. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Dangerous. This album tells it all. Because if you look real quick, this album is full of voodoo and witchcraft. You got the third eye right here over this door. You see it? You got the world and it's upside down here. You got a lake and then you've got skull and bones in this lake and then you've got his eyes. But let's focus on this part because there is a deep, dark message in here. First thing you notice is Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley believed in satanic ritual abuse and he believed in getting these Nephilim spirits from young innocent children. Michael Jackson showed it symbolically on here. And I'm not trying to accuse the man of what he did, but his album is telling me exactly what he did. Here is his hand and it's withered and white and cold with bandages on it. Here is a naked boy, little boy holding the skull of a dragon. I don't think you need rocket science to decode that message. Hit. Alistair Crowley said it like this. For the highest spiritual working one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force. A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable victim. And we as a church cried and wept me and my wife was in Chicago when Michael Jackson died and turned on the TV. And sweet Holy Spirit Church in Chicago came on TV and said, we're going to have a memorial service for Michael Jackson. The whole church wore one glove. The choir wore one glove. And they began to have altar call doing man in the mirror in the church. Worshiping Michael Jackson in God's house. A channeler of Nephilim. What are our young people supposed to think when they're wrestling in the bed with stuff in the middle of the night? Night crawlers creeping in their room and sending signals and messages in them. And we as a church? <laughs> this is Jesus talking. The disciples ask him a simple question. They said, how will we know when time's up. How will we know when the end is here? Jesus said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, but here's the key part, they were marrying and given in marriage. Marriage to who? Spirits. Nephilim. Until the day that Noah entered the ark. 
and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What is God telling us? He's telling us that it will get so wicked. No, listen to what I'm saying carefully. That people will begin to do evil continually. Do you know what that means? That means that anytime your children have a free time, they're thinking of a way to sin. Whenever they got spare minutes, they're sitting at home watching this stuff, listening to this stuff, waiting, looking for an opportunity to masturbate, to have sex, to look at some porn, to look at some evil, to get into something. Evil. Continually. Not only that, but as it was in the days of Noah, what was happening in the days of Noah? Spirits were coming down and joining themselves with humans. Am I saying we're going to see angels come down and do it? I don't think they have to because the spirits are already here getting into people and the people are worshiping them through Please pay attention to this part because I don't want you to think I've gone crazy, but I got to tell you the truth. Adolf Hitler tried this and others have tried it, but we're about to see all of these things begin to really come to pass in this time. Cloning. These spirits that came down, if you read the ancient text of the Sumerians, which was the first civilization, if you read the ancient text of the Mayans and the Egyptians, they all say that these Nephilim spirits, because they had high intelligence and because they were from another dimension, they were able to show the people and teach them how to clone and create different hybrid creatures and use medicine. This is where sorcery and all these different things came from, from Nimrod and Semiramis. This is why Babylon was so wicked because they were able to do all these things. This is in all the ancient writings, okay? But now they're able to do it again. They're able to clone. Adolf Hitler wanted to make clones like they used to make because he wanted to create an army without feeling or without a spirit so that they could be embodied by spirits. Well, they're getting ready to do this again and they're making humans or going to clone humans so they can be empty shells for guess who? Nephilim. This is a mouse where they cloned a human ear onto the mouse. This is called a chimera. This process is called transgenics. And it's where they take a gene from one species and clone it with another. What's the significance of this, G. Craig? Well, if you look on the caves and the pyramids and different ones, you would always see the ancient gods of Egypt and all the different races. They would have human bodies and animal heads and they would be hybrids on these. Y'all know what I'm talking about? This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to embody these old gods of old. So because knowledge shall increase, as the scriptures say, they're doing this with technology. Why? Because these spirits are technologically advanced. Are y'all paying attention yet? Every movie that comes out is about what? All the new movies. Aliens, UFOs. You know, I was praying to God and I said, God, our young people, they just don't want to read the Bible. They're just not finding what, you know, it's just like, and God spoke to me as plain as I'm talking to you right now and told me, he said, Hollywood has stolen from me. So you know what I did, Pastor? I started studying Hollywood and I found out George Lucas and Spielberg and all these guys, you know what? They read the Bible and they get their sci-fi stories from the Bible. Ezekiel seeing the wheels, what was he seeing? He was seeing interdimensional craft. They go back and find the angels that was merging with the Nephilim. They look at the war that Abraham fought against the giants and the spirits and the hybrids. They look at the war that Moses fought against the Amalekites and Amalek and all these giants. And they got all these good old stories. We knew nothing about them. We think that God is
standing somewhere in sandy ground walking around with no shoes on and no technology whatsoever. And we don't understand everything we're seeing. They stole from God. The most interesting story there is is God raising up a people to fight hybrid evil beings. Am I saying there's spaceships? I ain't seen one. But I'm just saying that in this time, we're about to see things we've never seen before. Because for some reason, we're comfortable and kick back in our chairs at church and we think we got it made, but we're not looking at the signal where our children are getting eviler and eviler and the music is getting more and more wicked and the entertainment, they're sacrificing themselves to Satan and praying to Satan now on the video music awards. And finally, you're going to hear a lot about this, so I got to deal with it. 2012, saw a movie preview of a movie called 2012 where they basically say that that's the end of all things because all the calendars, the Mayan calendar, the Sumerian calendar, all the ancient calendars, the Egyptian calendar, astrological calendar, all of them say that 2012 is it. They say that the new world would be created in 1776 and they say that at the end of this in 2012, this is when Nimrod comes and completes the pyramid and all this and all that, you know, whatever they're saying. But they're going to try to confuse you as a believer. So if you don't study the word and know what you know, in this time, they're going to make you think that they know what you don't know. Are y'all paying attention to me? And that's what this capstone on this pyramid is going to represent. That's what it represents right now. The annuus coeptus and the norbus odum seclorum. New world order, great undertaking. Are y'all paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you? Oh, but I got some good news. And that good news is this. Anybody knows what this is? It's a genoid. Genetics. I studied the Bible for years, y'all. But it wasn't until just the other day that I really found out what all of this is about. It's about genetics. You, me, the Bible, genetics. Let me explain. When God made man, he made man in his own image to be him in the earth. The devil came to corrupt that because the devil was jealous because, of course, he was kicked out and he didn't want man to succeed in God's image. So he came and brought sin. Sin came in and corrupted man, listen to this, genetically. Man was no longer purified or pure. Why? Sin came in genetically. And man became impure. But God told Satan, okay, you did this, but I got a plan. And God said, what I'm going to do I'm going to put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman. Now, any of us that know anything about fertilization and man, woman, and all that, you understand that a woman doesn't have a seed, right? A woman has an egg and the man has a seed. So I'm going to put enmity between you and the seed of the woman. That don't make sense if you look at it at the surface. But those of us that are spiritual understand that there was only one woman that carried a seed. And that woman was the Virgin Mary. She didn't need a man's seed. She carried the seed that would produce Christ. So he's going to put enmity between you. He said, I'm going to send a seed. It's going to be Jesus or Genus. Where you made man impure, I'm going to purify him with a Jesus 
gene, and I'm going to regenerate him. So I don't have to destroy the world with a flood anymore. I got a perfect gene. And all you have to do, people of God, is believe on him. And he will come in, purify who you once were, make you a new creation. And the Bible says, all things are passed away and behold. That means look and see all things. And it's going to bruise your head, Satan. And you're going to bruise his heel. So what did Satan do? I got to fake it. I got to create Nimrod and Samiris and I got to make it look like the Virgin Mary. I got to start Catholicism where I corrupt Pentecostalism and make the Pentecostals do the things that the, 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 that the Catholics do. I got to mess it up. I got to mess up Christianity. I got to get the preachers doing the things that the world do. I got to somehow mess this thing up. But understand something. No matter how bad the devil tries to mess it up, the perfect gene is there. And all you got to do is believe. Oh. The scripture tells us in Titus, he saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing by the Holy Spirit. I know I'm preaching a message to a plethora of people in here from different backgrounds, some people in the music industry do music. I'm sure those that will listen to this message, some of them are part of that whole thing. I'm here to tell you something, people of God. We're at the end. This is it. We as a church, for 10 years I've preached this message and we sat back and we allowed our children to be indoctrinated by a demonic culture of hip hop. We allowed our children to be indoctrinated by the merge of the church and the world. We allowed ourselves and we've sat back quietly and the enemy had a plan to bring Nephilim spirits into our music industry to corrupt us with our music. Now, a lot of us have a severe case of the Cain help it's. We want to stop, but we can't help it. We want to change, but we can't help it. It has everything to do with genetics. Because if you don't allow the power of God to regenerate you, you won't change. Listen, people of God, and I know we've talked about a lot in here, and you'll be able to get the DVD to remember it. But what I really want to leave you here with is that Jesus Christ can regenerate you. Listen, me and my wife were in Waco, Texas. There was a young boy whose sister came up to the pulpit. And his sister came up and said, I need prayer for my brother. He's out there in the foyer, but he can't come in church. Since he was little, he can't come in church. He's never been able to walk in church, and something's wrong, and we don't know what it is. So I said, well, go get him. Let's, let's, I mean, I didn't say that to the pastor that was over the service. He said, go get him, bring him in. So they brought this guy in. He's a Caucasian brother. They brought him in, brought him up to the altar, and they said, brother, do you want to be saved? And he said, no. They said, well, do you want help or whatever? You know, I mean, what? he said, no. So they said, well, let's just pray. And they begin to pray, and then I'm at my seat on the front row, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, stop him. Stop him from praying. And I was like, Lord, please, I really don't want to do this in here. <laughs> don't, Lord, I just want to mind my own business. God said, no, stop him. They don't know what they're doing. Stop. 
So I walked up, I said, y'all, the Holy Spirit said, stop. Had nothing else to tell him, Pastor, after that. So we just sitting there. <laughs> they looking like, further instructions, please? I was on to speak that night, so they listened to me and stopped. So he says, I said, stop, and they stopped. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, plain as I'm talking to you, said, some Satanist took his blood when he was born, and they offered it up to Satan, and they did a ritual on him. That's why he can't go to church. That's why he doesn't like the things of God at all. God told me, said, pray for him for his regeneration. I said, brother, uh, Satanist take, took your blood when you were young. The Holy Spirit is telling me his sister started crying. She knew about the Satanist. I said, but God told me to pray for him. And he looked, his eyes got big. God told me, Perform a spiritual blood transfusion on him. I, I said, come here, brother. I laid my hands on him. I said, in the name of Jesus, God is transfusing your blood right now. The blood of Jesus is going into the places that your will or whatever they did to you wouldn't allow. My wife is my witness. She stood right there. As I began to pray for this brother and speak, she was right there and saw this. He had a low-cut shirt on. Up through his neck, you could literally see all of his veins rise up, and you could see something moving in his veins. Literally. And as I began to pray, you could see all in his face this boy being made new. At that point, the boy gave his life to the Lord at that point, said he would never go back, been going to church, everything is fine. The reason I'm telling you that story is because we fail to realize how deep this thing is. It's not just you listening to your favorite song, but there are deep, dark things going on. Everybody bow your heads. I believe that there are many in here, some fell in here, some just came. Some came because they were invited, some came because they wanted to hear. But I also believe that there are many in here that need regeneration. Many in here that don't want to leave like they came. I believe that God gave me this message to expose what was exposed. But I believe it was for the reason of God calling his people back together to him. So that in these last days, you will not be fooled. While it's quiet and everybody's head is bowed, those of you that want Jesus Christ to regenerate you and make you new. Those of you that want to make that change and not be caught up in what these artists and entertainers are doing. Those of you that would rather have Jesus than what the devil has to offer. I want you to stand up right where you are. Keep your heads bowed. Don't look around. <laughs> There's no way you can keep listening to it. There's no way you can keep dancing to it. There's no way you can keep partying to it and it not get in you. You struggling? Porn? 
sex, masturbation, lust, you're struggling. Homosexuality, lesbian, you're struggling. Low self-worth, low self-esteem, you're struggling. Because something is being played in you and it's totally ungodly. But God came tonight. Though they may say the world is about to end, though they may put the movies out to scare you, the information, they want to haunt your bedroom. These folks won't. They are relentless and they won't give up until they have your soul. But Jesus has come to give you his gene, to purify you and make you new so that the devil's things won't overtake you. I need everyone that is standing up to do something for me because I'm going to believe God with you. I want you to come up to the front, this area, and just... Come on, just from right where, don't sit down. Come on. And we're going to get on our knees and we're going to repent before God so God can clean us, get this stuff out of us, get this stuff off us, get this stuff from around us, get this stuff from upon us. Clean our lives up. Just on your knees.